Hi, I'm Wallace Kelly, and I'm going to show you how to subscribe to an event in C Sharp and the .NET framework. I'm not going to go into the details of how events are implemented and the details of delegates. I'm just going to show you, given an event, how do I subscribe to an event? There's four steps that you need to go to, through. The first is to find the event of interest. You need to find a class that has on it an event that you want to respond to. Next, look at that event and determine what is the signature that that event is expecting. That is, this producer of the event is going to be calling the consumer. That's your code. This producer is going to be calling the consumer. It needs to call a method on your class. And so what should the signature of that method on your class be? If the, if the producer is going to be calling a method, the producer has to know what the signature is of that method, what parameters to pass, and what is expected back. Then, once you know what the signature of the method should be, then you can write your method to handle that event. And then lastly, you can subscribe to that event with the plus equal syntax. Well, let's use Visual Studio to see an example of this. I'm going to be using the file system watcher. It is a class that is in the .NET framework in the system.io namespace that knows how to monitor a folder and fire events whenever a file is created, renamed, or deleted. I'm going to point my file system watcher at the temp folder. And then when I look on this instance of this class, you'll notice that in IntelliSense, some of the members of this instance have a little lightning bolt. And that lightning bolt indicates that that is an event. And remember that's step one to identify the event of interest. So in this case, if I wanted to do something whenever a file was created in a folder, I would want to uh, respond to this event of created. Step, step two was to identify what is the signature of the event. And to identify the signature that the event is expecting, you can mouse over the event and you'll see that it is of type file system event handler. So type file system event handler. What does that mean? Well, if you look for the definition of that type, let me do it this way. So that means that I need to create a new instance of a file system event handler. So what is that signature of a file system event handler? Well, the signature, if you look on the MSDNs for the definition of this file system event handler, you can determine the signature by looking at the parameters around its definition. So the created event is expecting to call methods that receive two parameters, object sender and file system event args. It's ex going to pass two parameters, an object and a file system event args. It's not expecting anything back from those methods. So by looking at the definition of the event handler, you can determine the signature that the event is expecting. Step three was to write a method that matches that event. So let's see, we return void. We need some kind of a method that's going to be fired that uh, will do something whenever a file is created. It needs to have the signature that matches the delegate type. So that would be object sender, file system, event args, like so. And now I have a method. So what might I want to do in here? I might want to print to the console that a file was created. So that would get me started. However, in this case, I'm wanting to do more. I want to list the name of the file that was created. And so if you look at the parameters that are passed in, let's think about what these parameters are. This first one, object, is going to be a reference to the type that is firing this event. So if I wanted to, I could get my watcher by saying sender as file system watcher, and I would have access to all the things about the watcher. In this case, I don't need that, but that's what the sender is. The second one, the event args, is a very common pattern. So this object sender and then event args is used 90, if not 99% of the time, because the event args will have on it information related to the event. And in this case, it'll have the name of the file that was created. So I could do something with that. And so instead of having that generic message, I can have a custom message that says something, this is the kind of thing that occurred, and then here is the file that was, in this case, created. All right, so step one was uh, identify the event. Step two was to identify the signature. We looked in the docs for that. And then th step three was to oh, write the method. And then step four is to subscribe with the plus equal. 
So recall that created is of type file system event handler. So I create a new file system event handler. And now look what Visual Studio shows us in the constructor for a file system event handler. It has something a little unusual. And actually, this is a second way of determining the signature that this event is expecting. Notice that IntelliSense tells us that I should put a target here. And then it has this text as void object file system event args. Well, that's exactly the signature, void object file system event args. So rather than looking up the docs in MSDN, actually, this is the way, this is very comp, this is an easier way to identify what the signature is. This tells us that whatever method I'm calling needs to have that signature. And then these event handlers, these delegates have a special syntax where you just put the name of a method that matches that signature. Step four was to subscribe with the plus equal syntax. You'll notice that right now my code won't compile because what does it say? That says that the event created can only appear on the left hand side of a plus equal or a minus equal. So this says I can't set, um, yeah, I can't do an equal here. I have to do a plus equal. And that's just a special rule for events. And the idea is that you can chain together multiple event handlers. There's one more thing I have to do for my demo. You don't need to do this in general for events, but it just happens that the file system watcher has a property on it called enable raising events. Again, that's not common. It just is a feature of the file system watcher that you can turn events on and off. All right, so at this point, I should be able to, oops, one more thing. I need to keep the process alive so that it doesn't close right away. Put a little read key there. Control F5, so I believe my process is up and running. Let me jump in here and look at C colon backslash temp and create a new text document. And sure enough, you can see that as I create new text documents, new documents in here, the my code is responding. It's not responding yet to when files are deleted, so let's do that next. Watcher dot deleted, and we could go through the same process here. Mouse over. We'll see that it's also a file system event handler, but actually you get tired of typing all this out. You get tired of looking up the the signature. You get tired of typing the plus equal, then all this new event handler and all that stuff, and then stubbing out the methods. So Visual Studio is a huge help here in that it will automatically stub out methods for you for events. So watch as I type plus equal. Watch what Visual Studio does. It brings up this message that says new file system event handler press tab to insert and so it's suggesting that if you press tab now it will go ahead and insert that code and notice that it also even suggests the name of a method that matches the correct signature and I can even change that I can say on deleted and notice that Visual Studio is saying press tab to generate and oops I waited too long so let me try that again so plus equal tab on deleted tab and you see that it automatically stubbed that out. So I don't have to type that in. I don't have to copy and paste it from MSDN. Very nice. Sometimes I'll even do it like this. Watch. I'll, let me do it again. And this time I'll just accept. I'm going to press tab, 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 and just accept the default name. And then it's easy to rename it. Press uh, Select the name of it. Press F2 on deleted. So that's a pretty common way for me to do that. Then I can come in here and write some code. But what you'll notice is that this signature is exactly the same as the one for uncreated. So it turns out that uh, in this case I can just use the same method and like so. And I could even say uncreated or deleted. So now I have a single event method that is able to respond to both of those events. And then there's another one on here called renamed. And notice that this one is what? Renamed event handler. So this, the renamed event handler, it has a different signature. Let me show you another way that we can determine what the required signature is. I'm going to come here, select renamed event handler and press F12. And this will open up a auto-generated file from metadata that will also show me the signature. And so this is expecting to pass a renamed event args. If I press F12 on that, 
Now I can see that renamed event args derives from file system event args, and it includes some additional information that is, re that is unique to when a renamed event occurs. So the kind of thing that would be unique is that not only do we have a name of a file that's changed, but because the file's been renamed, we have the old name. All right, so the renamed event might have a slightly different signature. Hope you followed all that. There's one other thing you should know is that uh, starting in uh, C Sharp 2.0, you don't actually have to include the name of the type of the event. You can take that out. And in fact, if you're using Visual Studio um, 2000 or uh, Visual Studio 11 or greater, and you do the plus equal thing, it won't even include that in there. All right, let's see if I've got all this right. So did we respond to deleted? Yep, good. Uh, create a new text document. Rename it. Yep, renamed. So we got deleted, created, and renamed. Great. All right, well, I hope that's helpful. Let's review what we've learned. What we've learned is how to subscribe to events. And we saw that first you find the event of interest. Remember that the event is calling a method, so you need to know the signature of that method. There are several ways to look it up. The fastest way is just to press, uh, use the Visual Studio plus equal tab tab. You write the method that handles that event and then subscribe to it with the plus equal. All right, once again, I'm Wallace Kelly. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.